I've known two or three hit men that were very quiet guys. Yeah. And would cut no mercy. Yeah. In Louisiana. You just listened to a snippet of a conversation that took place on March 6th in McCurtain County, Oklahoma, following a Board of Commissioners meeting, and it featured several prominent local officials, including the county sheriff, Kevin Clardy, his investigator, and multiple commissioners. Now, a local newspaper, the McCurtain Gazette News, broke the story, and they released a transcript of the conversation, but now we're getting the audio. Now, in the audio that you're about to listen to, they incriminate themselves, and to say that what they say is unhinged really would be an understatement. Not only do they allegedly plot the literal assassination of local journalists, but they also talk about their desire to assault and murder black people. It is genuinely deranged, and when you get more context after we listen to it, you'll understand how sociopathic these individuals are. So we're going to listen to a portion of the audio now, but before we do, just a content warning, obviously, you're going to hear very violent racist rhetoric that is deeply disturbing. But without further ado, here's what they said. It was back in the day, would that, like when Alan Marshall take a damn blackjack, whoop their ass and throw them in the cell, I'd run for fucking chair. Yeah. Well, it's not like that no more. I know. We're taking them down <laughs> on, on Mud Creek and hang them up with the damn rope. Yeah. But you can't and do the that. Thing about it, they got it. more rights than we got. What they really don't know is they... And that's, see, that's the thing about it. 20 years ago, I would have done something like that. I'm a, uh, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have put it in a position. You know? They're insignificant in my life. Yes. Really. They, they bring the whole thing. The whole thing. Goes around, goes around it. It will. I told you it will. Yeah. I know, I know where two big deep holes are here. They need I got an escalator. Well, these are our free dug. Yeah, but the yeah. thing of it is, you know. We actually told the I've truth. Know, I've known two or three hit men that were very quiet guys. Yeah. And would cut no fucking mercy. Yeah. In Louisiana. Because it was all mafia around yeah. Louisiana. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but here's the reality. If a hair on his wife's head, for Slimham's head, or any of those people that really were behind all that, if the hair on their head got touched by anybody, who who would be the bad guys? Who'd you blame for? Yeah. yeah. On a bar body, you know, we wrap it up in tenfold to preserve the body and stuff like that, and I was, then we put the, get the, all the body parts and stuff like that, and uh, Kyla was out there too. Kyla. All the body part? Oh, she come apart? Yeah, just the bar body. I know, I, I picked up one. And, uh, they really Cal fell apart when they're burnt? Ten. Yeah. And you never them. had barbecue? That's another thing. Yeah. Same. I'm hungry. Tell them, tell them, tell them. I don't know what you're saying. And they got to wrap the handful and put it in the body bag. Kyle goes, you do know what we got to do now, right? And Faith goes, no, what? She goes, she got to preheat the oven 350 degrees, leave her in there for 15 minutes. And she went, Yeah. Now, a lot of what they said doesn't really make sense because we don't have the full context, but when you learn about what they're talking about, it gets so much worse. So that last conversation about barbecue referenced a woman who died in a house fire and she went back in to save her dogs. That's when she died. That's what they're joking about there. So the Heartland Signal explains the transcript suggests that the group first started discussing a recent fire which killed a woman and her two dogs. The group joked about the woman's body parts falling off her body and that it is similar to eating barbecue. Now, as for the journalists, they were talking about assassinating, quote, Manning chimed in and claimed nobody would care if two of the Gazette News reporters were harmed. Quote, yeah, but here's the reality, Manning allegedly said. If a hair on his wife's head, Chris Willingham's head, or any of those people that really were behind that, if any hair on their head got touched by anybody, who would be the bad guy? The trio was supposedly frustrated with the Gazette News portraying the sheriff's office unfavorably in their reporting. Now, in the audio, you also allegedly heard Commissioner Mark Jennings referring to two pre-dug holes, and that was seemingly in reference to Gazette News reporters uh, Bruce Willingham and his son, Chris Willingham. Now, as for the racism, I mean, there's really no additional context there. They just want to be able to kill black people. That's it. Now, Commissioner Jennings, who is the one that claimed he would run for sheriff if you could still legally violently attack and assault and, and kill black people, he claims that black people have more rights. And you heard this in the audio. He claims that black people have more rights than white people because you can't legally murder them. I mean, these people are genuinely 
disturbed mentally and they should be in no position of power now since the audio leaked the fbi has opened an investigation into them obviously since they are literally caught plotting an assassination allegedly and it's so bad that oklahoma's governor kevin stitt has also called on all of these officials heard here to resign and i just want to emphasize here that in order for a republican to call on other republicans to resign i mean a sheriff's position like these positions are nonpartisan, but they're conservative they identify with the republican party but in, or, in order for a republican to say other republicans need to resign it has to be for something pretty fucking bad so it gives you a sense of the gravity of the situation if the republican governor is saying all right this is so bad that you all have to resign immediately now as for the racist sociopaths involved here they actually issued a response and their defense is so wild that I don't even know how to describe it. So the McCurran County Sheriff's Office put out this statement on Facebook, and we're going to read the entire thing because it is that good. Quote, the last 72 hours have been amongst the most difficult and disruptive in recent memory. This is a very complex situation and one we regret having to address. There is and has been an ongoing investigation into multiple significant violations of the Oklahoma Security of Communications Act, Title 13. Chapters 176.3 and 176.4, which states that it is illegal to secretly record a conversation in which you are not involved and do not have the consent of at least one of the involved parties. They're really burying the lead here to talk about how illegal it is to uh, record them. But anyways, they continue. There is a significant number of victims of this criminal activity, and it has taken significant effort and time to identify them and corroborate evidence. Many of these recordings, like the one published by media outlets on Friday have yet to be duly authenticated or validated. Our preliminary information indicates that the media released audio recording has in fact been altered. Wonder if they're going to say uh, how. Spoiler alert, they're not going to. The motivation for doing so remains unclear at this point. Really? Really, the motivation is unclear? That matter is actively being investigated. In addition to being illegally obtained, the audio does not match the transcription of that audio and is not precisely consistent with what has been put into print. Multiple agencies are assisting in this ongoing investigation. As a result of the press release that went out on Friday, a large number of threats of violence, including death threats, have been made against county employees and officials, their families and friends. There will be continued press releases from this agency as the investigation comes to a close and findings are forwarded to the appropriate authorities for felony charges to be filed on those involved. Okay, my initial response to that is whew, just absolutely mind-blowing their response is basically how dare you illegally record us plotting the assassination of journalists and black people how how do people like this exist like the audacity of these motherfuckers to put out that statement after they were caught in 4k plotting the assassination of journalists and it seems like they were seemingly i guess trying to cultivate sympathy because they received uh death threats in response to them openly discussing the murdering and disposal of the bodies of journalists that they didn't like. Look, you just, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. You, di you can't make this shit up, right? You can't make this shit up. Oh, and also, uh, the audio was altered according to them. Just admit that you were caught red-handed and resign. But they won't. At least at the time that I record this video, they have not stepped down. They are remaining defiant. So I really don't know what else to say about this story. I don't think that my commentary will do it justice here. Just when I thought that elected conservatives couldn't possibly surprise me, this audio gets leaked. And then uh, my mind is blown once again. And I've got to say this, but we need a total and complete shutdown of conservatism until we can figure out what the fuck is going on. Because holy shit, just when you think that elected officials have really sunken as low as they possibly could have they go and do this just again wow mind-boggling shit here